grade students. The LPAC assessment, which is administrated to all English learners, SPAC, ELA, and math, which is administrated to all 11th grade students, CAS science test, which is administrated to all seniors. Our advanced placement students took their AP exams from May 2nd, 2022 to May 12th, 2022. Sports updates. Englewood High School, Englewood High Sports ended the school year very strong, making our future in spring sports bright. Baseball ended the season with a .500, five through five record. Our softball team played hard this season and was laid by coach Arturo Nunez, who will be stepping down this season. Thank you for your service, Coach Nunez. Boys volleyball played well and finished the season with a .500, five through five record. Track and field staff did a great job with our team. Boys track finished second in the Ocean Legacy. Girls freshman and sophomore team won the Ocean Legacy title. Roden Tellis finished first place in boys tennis singles and our SIF Legacy. Congratulations, Roden, for your championship. June 1st, we will hold the Inglewood High Sports Award Program. Partnerships with Inglewood High. 20 to 25 of our students at Inglewood High have been blessed by our partnership with the NFL Network. Their staff arrives on Tuesday afternoons, teaching our students how to edit, produce, put graphics on the screen during a live feed, announce the games, and even direct a football telecast. We have met their entire photograph team that sits on the sidelines taking pictures at the games and have even met the technical guys who work behind the scenes. Most recently, they donated various items that have helped our students set up a professional stage exclusively just for our students to film, edit, and hone their skills. We are the only high school in the nation with this program, and we look forward to continuing this partnership again next year with the NFL Network. In April, nearly 250 of our students benefited by going to the SoFi Stadium and seeing the display provided by the Kenzie Art Foundation. Thank you to the district for arranging this opportunity for our students to be educated on so many topics. It was truly an amazing field trip. Another partnership we have at Inglewood High is with the OSA Co and the Alliance program. On May 18, a couple of our students were able to go to, Dar Dar go to Dodger Stadium for the Dodger Korea Day and Game. They listened to various speakers talk about their role working for the organization and even got to take in the game for a suit. Their next field trip will be on Wednesday, June 1st. To celebrate the closing of the school year at the office of the LA84 Foundation, some of our students participated in our partnership with the 500 Sound Academy to introduce our students to the world of sound production. Our marching, our marching band is up and marching. They had had the opportunity to participate in the Rams victory celebration in Los Angeles and participate in a pre-game performance at SoFi Stadium. On Saturday, March 14th, the band was part of and performed in the Getty Center 25th anniversary and the Yola Center Music Festival, hosted in the city of Inglewood. The band is preparing for their performance at Dodger Stadium on June 16th at the Dodger Gala event. The band will perform a pre-concert performance for the Jennifer Lopez concert at Dodger Stadium. Students will get to attend the concert as well. As well. In closing, our seniors are looking forward to graduation since the morning at the forum. Congratulations to the class of 2022. We will miss you. Congratulations, Ms. Cadena Haro, and you did an amazing job of sharing Inglewood High School's student report. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, so board members and community, I am also honored to introduce our other amazing student from Sentinella TK through eight. Uh, this is Ms. Demoya Tatiana Aliman, and she's gonna share her student report with us. Welcome. Good evening, board president, Margaret Evans, board members, county administrator, Dr. Torres, cabinet members, and the Inglewood Unified School District community. 
My name is Demoya Alaman. I am a seventh grader reporting as a representative on behalf of Principal Boris and the entire Sentinella school community. I have only been at Sentinella for a few months, but I have felt welcomed and had the feeling I had been there for years. Teachers and staff are generous and really nice to work with. There are many special and exciting events that have taken place at Sentinella this year, and we are proud to share with you this evening. Through our partnership with City Year, they have provided academic support in our fifth through eighth grade classrooms. City Year members work closely with teachers and students to support the needs in the classroom. They also offer the school extended learning time to support homework and completing assignments and projects. In addition, the AmeriCorps members have hosted three Spirit Weeks this school year to promote attendance and student engagement. On each day, there were different themes of activities. Some of these activities included Crazy Hair Day, College Day, Dress Like Your Teacher Day, Come Just as an Animal, Fun Trivia Games, and Challenges. These activities motivated students to come to school and engage in not only the fun, but encourage the importance of being in school every day and participating in creating a positive school culture. Another help program we have is Hey Tutor. Located in the library, we have three tutors. Hey Tutor provides support in fundamental reading skills and English language arts and mathematics. Tutoring that supports the teaching that takes place in the classrooms aligned to the state standards. We are proud to announce that Sentinella reclassified 16 English language students this year, more than any of our other schools in the district. Good job, Sentinella Bears. Sentinella School ensures, he, <laughs> ensures we have to be active in physical education. Grades four to eight participate in daily Frisbee coaching during the designated PE period with instructor Tof Eggers from California Ultimate. With the help of DonorsChoose.com, Mr. Cruz used a grant to raise funds for equipment and has been teaching the seventh grade students the fundamentals of volleyball and badminton. Sentinella gifted and talented education students have been participating in field trips and Saturday enrichment programs so that they can help to further develop their talents and qualities as a student. At Sentinella, teachers in grades two to eight have arranged for their students to take field trips that enhance learning and are tied to their academic standards and lessons. Grades two, natural, History Museum, Grades 3, Aquarium of the Pacific to help study marine life. Grades 4, Knott's Berry Farm to help study early California and the Old West. Grades 5, California Science Center. Grades 6, 7, and 8, Franklin Canyon to help study of ecosystems. 126 5th to 6th graders attended the tall ship field trip sponsored by the district central office. Sentinel students spent the day aboard educational sailing vessels built to train and equip young people with 21st century leadership skills that inspire maritime and STEM career paths. SoFi Stadium, Kinsey Art Collection. In celebration of Black History Month, grades three to seven contributed works of art to the art walk at Frank D. Pear Elementary School elementary school for Hispanic seventh for Hispanic celebration one of our seventh grade students Carla Avalos won first place in the Hispanic Heritage Art Walk and she also participated in the West Basin Municipal Water District West Basin's Water is Life student art contest. Sentinella hosted a virtual Christmas concert where all grades participated in the program that was led by Mr. Dominic Mastacaro music teacher from Education Through Music Los Angeles. This is all that has been happening at Sentinel TK to 8th School from for now. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. Congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and providing such a comprehensive report. And I just wanted to clarify, did you say that you recently were enrolled at Sentinella, so you're new to the school? Yes, I am, Miss. Congratulations and welcome to Inglewood Unified School Districts and Sentinella. 
so proud of you. You did an amazing job. Congratulations. A special thank you to Ms. Tate for um, inviting Ms. Yvette Cadenajaro to join us and for Ms. Burris for inviting Ms. Demoya Tatiana Aliman uh, this evening. Congratulations to all. Thank you so much. Board members and community, we're gonna transition to the next portion of our board agenda. This is our student spotlight um, under 6A. I am honored to introduce to all of you our Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Bernadette Lucas, and she's gonna get us started. Welcome, Dr. Lucas. Thank you so much, Dr. Torres. This is indeed, we say at every meeting, our favorite part of the agenda when our students are recognized, when they share their school reports. So let's get right to it. I'd like to introduce Dr. Saba Araya, principal of City Honors High School as she spots, spotlights Brooklyn Winters. Dr. Araya. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, Dr. Torres, board members, cabinet, um, parents and students. I am so pleased um, to not only introduce you to Miss Brooklyn Winters, but to tell you a little bit about her um, life story. So Brooklyn was once my student, so um, forgive me if I stumble a bit, because I'm so happy for her. Um, Brooklyn Winters' life imitates her art, and they are both outstanding. The city, the senior at City Honors International Preparatory School was accepted into the Ryman Arts Program as an eighth grader, earlier than most applicants. This three-year art program teaches students fundamental art skills in preparation for college and a career in the arts. She attended California State Fullerton and Otis College of Design for two months each year to develop her craft and immerse herself in all things art and design. She has also participated in our Engineer Factory Summer Program and the Aerospace Bridge Program. She has maintained a, a GPA over 4.0 throughout high school and has taken seven college classes through our dual enrollment partnership with El Camino College. She's been offered the Presidential Scholarship and the Diversity Scholarship at Otis College, and she would like to double major in Studio Arts and Women's Studies. She also aspires to have three careers in her lifetime. She wants to be a freelance artist, which she all already is. So. Um, I wanted to show you, I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is her artwork that is in my office. She's amazing. She wants to be a freelance artist. She wants to be an art teacher and a museum curator. Brooklyn excels in painting and drawing, but she also enjoy, enjoys sculpting and digital art. Her other hobbies include reading action and adventure books, spending time with her family and knitting. Brooklyn has been a key player on the Inglewood High School girls volleyball team, and she served as team captain this year. She gives back to her community by volunteering at the annual Make Your Mark in the Park event, where she teaches art to, to community members of all ages. In addition, she donates books annually to our book drive. Brooklyn has this advice to share with her fellow IUSD students. The biggest mistake you can make is not only asking for help, support gives us strength. I'm so proud of Brooklyn. She's one of our spectacular seniors and we wanna wish her the best here um, in all of her future endeavors. Thank you so much. Dr. Rye, that was beautiful. Um, Ms. Winters, congratulations. And once again, um, our, the youngest amongst us are offering incredible advice. The biggest mistake you can make is not asking for help. Support gives us strength. That is so, so true. Dr. Torres, may I hand it back to you? Yeah, I just wanted to thank you, Dr. Araya, for acknowledging our amazing student, Brooklyn Winters. I am so proud of her and all of her achievements. She's amazing. And I, I wish her the very best as well. So thank you again and congratulations. So board members and community, we're gonna transition to the next set of recognitions. This is under uh, item number seven of our board agenda. 7A, honoring students, staff and parents. We have two schools, uh, two school communities that we're gonna be acknowledging and honoring this evening. Uh, Warren Lane TK through six elementary school and Kelso TK through six elementary school. I'm gonna welcome back uh, Dr. Lucas um, and she's gonna get us started, thank you. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Torres. And with that, we will start with Ms. Calhoun, Principal of Warren Lane for Warren Lane's recognitions. Ms. Calhoun. Thank you, Dr. Lucas. Good evening to Dr. Torres, board members, cabinet, and the Inglewood Unified School District community. It brings me great pleasure to recognize some of the phenomenal students, staff, and parents of Warren Lane Elementary School. I would like to start with Ms. Kelly Manning. Ms. Manning is a rock star. Her talent as an instructional coach with an expertise in foundational literacy has been vital in implementing our district and site instructional goals. She never hesitates to roll up her sleeves and jump in to help students, staff, and parents. Ms. Manning takes pride in everything she does at our school, whether it's leading Warren Lane's Read Across America events or supporting teachers with implementation of the core curriculum. She's a tremendous asset to our school community and the Inglewood Unified School District. Thank you. Ms. LaFawn Witherspoon. Every time I see her, my face lights up. Uh, she just reminds me of sunshine. She's bright and warm, and she's Warren Lane's phenomenal instructional assistant for kindergarten and TK class. She exudes positive energy and has a way with those TK kinder class like no other. Her patience is a true gift. She is beloved by all who know her, especially her students. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Yonisha Jones. Ms. Yonisha Jones is Warren Lane's superstar parent. She is always looking for ways to make a fun and exciting experience for our Warren Lane students. When I want to see her smile, all I have to do is mention a TK kinder class and her face just lights up. She's always eager to support our school and our school community in any way, and she never hesitates to pitch in. She is also the proud parent of Cherish Kelly, who will be recognized as well tonight. Excellence runs in their family. Next, <laughs> I have Mr. Landon Lee. He is the top student in his kindergarten class. Every day at school, he demonstrates PBIS, our school's PBIS core values, whether it's in the classroom or on the playground. He always shows respect to his teachers, staff, and students. He has a friendly demeanor and a very outgoing personality, which makes him a natural leader. He hopes to become a police officer one day when he grows up. Thank you. All right. All right. So next we have Miss Yoni, um, Cherish Kelly, who is the daughter of Miss Yonisha Jones. And I just wanna share some things that her teacher wrote about her. Constant growth is a Herculean, there we go, Herculean task. It is even greater when a nine-year-old is, is, is the planner. Yet there seems to be no challenge too grand for Cherish Kelly. Cherish has always plans her goals weekly. She assessed her goals and she practiced mastering her goals. I would like to also add, Cheris has not missed one single day of school and she is always on time. So that in itself deserves a round of applause. She's a very amazing young lady. In addition, Cheris is also the winner of the Martin Luther King um, speech contest for the city of Inglewood. And she's also a scholar athlete. Um, I am just so proud of all of our students, staff and our parents. And I just wanna say with this being the last school recognition for Warren Lane, I wanna thank our students, parents, staff for working together to keep all of our students focused on learning during this difficult time. I am truly going to miss Warren Lane's amazing community. Thank you. Ms. Calhoun, that was a beautiful, beautiful message that you just gave. I wanna thank you for your instructional leadership. You know instruction inside and out. Um, from, the day I've met you, from the day I met you, um, that was on full display, your understanding and knowledge of instructional strategies, how to meet the needs of students, how to plan and organize around instruction. Your love of students um, comes through in every single conversation I have with you. And I wanna thank you for your leadership of Warren Lane. You deserve that acknowledgement and I want to thank you for it. Can we please hear from Ms. Calhoun? Thank you, Dr. Lucas. <laughs> thank you so much. And now we transition to Ms. Irene Green, principal 
of Kelso Elementary School, Ms. Green. Irene, you're on mute. I mean, Miss Green, you're on mute. Oh my gosh, and I just gave this lovely <laughs> introduction. It was beautiful. I could tell, yes. <laughs> All right, good evening, Dr. Torres, <laughs> cabinet members, board members, and the Inglewood community. Um, I would like to... Um, Welcome all of you to the special part of our um, board meeting this evening. Um, I'm going, going to recognize a couple of students and some of our um, staff members at Kelso Elementary School. Um, the first one is Jair Harris. And Jair is a happy young man. He is also the student um, body president, the student council president for Kelso Elementary School. And I reached out to his teacher because I always believe in bringing teachers into recognitions. And this is what she said. Jair is a natural leader, one who uses integrity to inform his decisions. I have watched his growth in responsibility and confidence, and I am certain his trajectory is beyond what we can currently envision. I am so grateful to have been his teacher for the past two years and his student council facilitator for three years. His positive attitude and motivation to learn is infectious and has a lasting effect on all those he encounters. Congratulations, Jair, for a well-deserved recognition. Love your teacher, Mrs. Royal. All righty, we're gonna move on to Aaliyah Jackson. Aaliyah Jackson is also a sixth grader at Kelso Elementary School. Very happy young lady who, personif who personifies our Kelso values of pride, positive attitude, respect, integrity, diligence, and excellence. Um, she consistently works hard in her classroom. She does her work quickly, but it's very accurate. Um, her teacher is very proud of her. She's always looking to help in the classroom. And on top of all of this, she has perfect attendance. So congratulations to Aaliyah Jackson. Alrighty, this, this next person I wanna recognize is um, Shonda Luckett. Shonda Luckett is our cafeteria manager. Um, she is a friendly woman, um, has a smile on her face when she greets our kids. She's a hard worker and goes out of her way to ensure our scholars eat breakfast and lunch. Our babies come to school hungry some days and she makes the time to get them a snack just to ensure that they can start their school day off properly. Um, there's often um, many times when she works alone, but that does not deter her. She makes sure that our babies are eating on time and that they have a healthy meal. So um, I really wanna recognize her. She doesn't complain about a thing. She is full of life and I absolutely love her. So congratulations, Ms. Becker. Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez is our data tech, um, our clerk typist. I'm sorry. He's our clerk typist. And I cannot say enough about him. He knows how to run every report there is to run. If you need a report ran, reach out to Mr. Gonzalez because he will be the one. Um, he's creative and knowledgeable. He designs all of our certificates for our students when we recognize them throughout the year. Um, he completes every task I ask him to complete, and it's done with accuracy. Um, He's willing to help when needed. Sometimes I don't have my custodian there in the morning and he'll run out and set up my trash cans for breakfast. He opens my facilities for me. So he is an asset to Kelso Elementary School and I couldn't thank him enough. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Ms. Ashley Cooper. Um, Ms. Cooper has been with us for a few years and she is our SDC 5-6 teacher, fifth and sixth grade teacher. Um, she is so inspirational both to our staff and to students. Uh, she works hard to develop her scholars. They are on the computer every day doing research projects. Can't no one tell her that her students are not ready to move to the next level. She works diligently with her kids. Um, she's very creative. This year, she's really branched out and um, she's conducted our, she's led our Black History activities at school, which were phenomenal. The kids had a blast. Um, she had us out there dancing. The whole, you know, students and staff were out there dancing. Um, she led our talent show in which the kids had a chance to show off their talent. It was um, called Kelso's Got Talent, and it was a great show. And now she's in charge of our sixth grade dance. And the ideas she has are amazing. So I am very proud of her. She truly has a passion for scholars. And I want to thank Ashley Cooper and congratulations.
Ms. Green, thank you so much for celebrating your school community. Now it is your turn. Ms. Green, I want to commend you for your for the leadership of Kelso. You are the embodiment of lifelong learning. The way you ask questions, the way you probe, the way you're constantly reflecting on your practice in order to move your school is to be commended. Additionally, this year you've taken, taken on two key district leadership positions in the MTSS leadership team and also with the special education leadership from a school site perspective. So I wanna take this moment to commend you on your site level and district level uh, leadership. Thank you so much, Ms. Green. Thank you very much, Dr. Lucas. Absolutely. Dr. Torres, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucas. Congratulations, Ms. Calhoun, Ms. Green. I am also very proud of the two of you. I appreciate the opportunity to lead our district alongside each one of you and just want you to know how proud I am. Uh, you did a beautiful job of acknowledging your school communities, and I just want to say thank you and congratulations uh, to all of our honorees this evening. Board members and community, we're going to transition to our next recognition. This is under item 7B of our board agenda. Um, this is a recognition of the Inglewood Unified School District uh, Student Advisory Council for the County Administrator. And this evening, uh, board members, cabinet, and community, I have the honor of recognizing our amazing Student Advisory Council. And I mentioned that earlier this year, um, I sent out an application, uh, sent it out to students asking if they were interested in serving in this uh, Student Advisory Council. And this evening, I have the pleasure of recognizing them. Let's go to the next slide, please. So the purpose of the county administrators Student Advisory Council is really to elevate student voices. It's really important for us as district leaders to hear directly from our students about their experiences at our school sites. I wanna also make sure that we promote an inclusive environment at our uh, to ensure that we also um, honor the diversity of our student body. Um, I also thought that it was important to provide our students with opportunities to share feedback uh, about their experiences in our schools and to give us their recommendations for how we can continue to improve as a district. Let's go to the next slide, please. So I just wanted to give you some brief information about our selection process. So we began recruiting um, in September of 2021 we received 60 applications. This is uh, ranging from students in fifth through 12th grade. So we admitted all of the students that submitted an application with their teacher recommendation on file. And we began meeting with our students earlier this year. Let's go to the next slide, please. So we began a meeting in November and our students provided us with meaningful feedback and critical information for us as district leaders around areas including student engagement and connectedness. Uh, we talked about school safety and our students shared their feedback about whether or not they feel safe and what additional supports they feel that they believe in order to um, support safety at their school sites. They talked about bullying, uh, social and emotional well-being and wellness. Um, they uh, provided feedback around instructional supports that they felt that they needed and also extracurricular activities. Let's go to the next slide, please. So what I wanted to do is just to highlight our amazing students and we're gonna go school by school. So these are our council members from Bennett QP through eight leadership Academy of Excellence. If you could please join me in acknowledging our students. Let's go to the next slide, please. These are the amazing student advisory council members from Beulah Payne P through eight Leadership Academy of Excellence. Let's go to the next slide, please. These are our amazing students. Next slide, please. From Bennett Q P through eight Leadership Academy of Excellence. Next slide, please. 
I don't know if we're having tech difficulty. I think we are. Okay. Oh. Okay, Marisela, I will call you. I think we're back. I think we're back, Dr. Schwartz. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's transition to the next slide, please. Thank you. So from Centinella TK through eight elementary, if you can please join me in acknowledging our student advisory council members. Go to the next slide, please. Frank D. Parent, TK through eight school. Congratulations to our student advisory council members. So the next school is Highland TK through six elementary. If we could transition to that slide, please. And let's acknowledge our student advisory council members. Our next school is Hudnall TK through six elementary school. Please join me in acknowledging our student advisory council members. From Kelso TK through six elementary school, congratulations to our student advisory council members. From Oak Street, TK through eight school, congratulations to our student advisory council members. From Warren Lane, TK through six elementary school, congratulations to our student advisory council members. The next slide, please. From City Honors International Preparatory High School, congratulations to our Student Advisory Council members from Crozier Middle School, congratulations to our Student Advisory Council members. And then we have Inglewood High School, congratulations to our Student Advisory Council members. There's Inglewood High School and then Morningside High School. Congratulations to our student advisory council members. So I wanna take this opportunity to congratulate our amazing student advisory council members and to thank you so much for working directly with our Inglewood Unified School District leadership team and myself in providing us with critical feedback. We appreciate you so much and we, honor you this evening. Thank you so much. We're gonna open it up to our board members um, if you have any questions or comments regarding this item. So we'll begin with our board vice president, Dr. Carlos McGee. Thank you, Dr. Torres. I too just wanna to say congratulations. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for students to engage and engage us. Uh, it helps us to really improve the work that we're trying to do. And certainly it gives them an opportunity to have a real collaborative uh, partnership. So if any of the other board members would like to weigh in, um, please do so at this time. Thank you so much, Dr. McGee. I appreciate that. Okay. All right, so let's move to the next item of our board agenda. I didn't hear any board members. I don't see any, okay. Let's move to the next recognition. This is under item 7C. Um, this is recognizing the Inglewood Unified School District um, County Administrator Parent Advisory Council. Let's go to the next slide. Um, I wanna uh, share with you that I formed a parent advisory council this year, um, in addition to the Student Advisory Council, because I believe that it's really important to hear, not just from our students, but also from our parents. And so I reached out to our uh, PTA and um, asked for uh, our PTA if they were interested in, in serving in our 
Parent Advisory Council, and I was very fortunate uh, for the opportunity to work directly uh, with our PTA uh, leadership team. And so the purpose really of this County Administrators Parent Advisory Council is to ensure that we provide our parents with an opportunity for them to be engaged, actively engaged in their students' educational journeys and to provide us with immediate feedback. So I included my cabinet um, and we provided updates on um, some topics and I'll share those topics with you in a few moments. And we received critical feedback from our parent leaders in our district. Um, we had very honest and fair conversations. And this was an opportunity for us to elevate parent voices and to en empower our parents. But we also leveraged our parent leadership um, so that they can also take back critical updates and information to their school communities. And we collaborated on an ongoing basis uh, to identify issues and to problem solve together along the way. Let's go to the next slide, please. So as I mentioned, um, we worked together as a district leadership team. I worked with our PTA lead leadership team. We began meeting monthly uh, beginning in August. And it was really important for me to begin uh, meeting with our parents in August because one of the first topics that we began talking about was around safely reopening our schools. Uh, and we had our last parent advisory council meeting uh, last week. So as I mentioned, the objectives of our Parent Advisory Council was really to actively engage our parents, to collaborate and, and to ensure transparency in the work of our district and to receive immediate feedback and to also receive um, feedback around the communication of our district and what we can do as a district to continue to improve. And of course, our parents, advocate for their students always, and we're here to support our parents to ensure that our students are successful. Let's go to the next slide, please. So these are some of the topics that we covered. As I mentioned, we discussed fall reopening of schools. We provided um, information on our COVID-19 guidelines and protocols, and our parents provided immediate feedback and they provided their recommendations. And a lot of the recommendations that our parents provided around reopening of schools and how we could better communicate with our families was actually from our Parent Advisory Council. So I wanted to thank our Parent Advisory Council for uh, the critical work and the support that they provided. They also gave us feedback on our independent studies program. Uh, we also talked a lot about student and parent and family engagement, and they've been actively involved in working with our site leadership teams around ensuring that we open a parent center at each one of our school sites. They provided critical feedback around school safety, specifically around traffic controls. And we had an opportunity to invite Chief uh, Frontrada from the Inglewood Police Department, and he addressed our parents directly and helped to problem solve a lot of the issues that our Parent Advisory Council brought up as it relates to school safety and traffic control. Our Parent Advisory Council also gave us critical feedback as it relates to our elementary and secondary school emergency relief funds. Um, th these are updates that we provided in our board meetings and they've also provided us with critical feedback as well. They've provided us with feedback around uh, the communications that I send out um, and what we can improve um, as far as communications, they've also given us feedback on our website. We all know that we post a lot of important updates and information on our district website, and our parents have been very instrumental in giving us uh, feedback uh, about how we can improve our website as our main communication tool. They also provided us with feedback on facilities projects. We also provided updates on a school consolidation and closure, and also uh, student assessment and testing data. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. So I want to present um, to our board and our community, our amazing parent advisory council members. Some of them are joining us this evening and I want to honor them and thank them this evening. Uh, from Frank D. Parent, we have Rogelio Rivas. From Hudnell, TK through 
six elementary, we have Erica Uyoa. From Woodworth, K through eight elementary, uh, we have Mario Sanchez. From Highland TK through six elementary, we have Jessica Garcia. From Inglewood High School, we have Marcy Brown. From Kelso TK through six elementary, we have Maria Bedoya. From Oak Street TK through eight, we have Nancy Gomez. From Highland TK through six, we have Sylvia Selby. From Oak Street TK through eight, we have Gloria Venegas. From La Tijera Academy of Excellence, TK through eight, we have Chris Rhodes. And from Frank T. Parent, TK through eight, Josephine Locke. If you can please join me in acknowledging our county administrators, parent advisory council members. Thank you so much, parents. I really, really appreciate all of you. Let's go to the next slide, please. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you again. We're gonna open it up to our board members. If you have any questions or comments, we'll begin with our board vice president, Dr. Carlos McGee. Um, I'd like to open it up to the board members if they'd like to um, comment on the presentation that was just presented, please do so at this time. I think it was amazing. Uh, recognition uh, to our parents, uh, seeing how inclusive and involved they are uh, with the structure and the vision of our district. So we thank you. We thank you. And it's because of you um, as to why we're able to move forward with, with the clear vision in mind. So thank you. And thank you, Dr. Torres, for <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Myers, is there anyone else that would like to um, comment? Well, I'm just gonna say um, these type of collaborations are so important. And I'm glad that um, Dr. Torres, you saw the need and the vision um, because without parent and community input, we're just working in isolation. So I applaud each and every one of those individuals that represented our schools for participating. And I think um, moving forward, I would like to see more people, you know, sign up to be involved in what the district is doing. So thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much, Dr. McGee. And thank you so much for your comment as well, uh, Mr. Myers. I really appreciate it. Congratulations again. So board members and community, we're going to transition to item 7D. Uh, this is uh, our spring sports athletes. Uh, I'm going to welcome back Dr. Lucas, our chief academic officer. Thank you, Dr. Torres. I am so honored to um, share with the community an update on our spring sports scholar athletes. I'm ready for the next slide. Thank you. Um, so just quickly, what does it mean to be a scholar athlete? Without reading the slide to you all, I just want to acknowledge the incredible hard work that our scholar athletes engage in in order to balance both academics and sports. It takes a lot. They develop qualities that will serve them not only now while they're in their K-12 careers, but in their careers, college, and life. So um, just really want to call out what it takes to be a scholar athlete. I'm ready for the next slide. So Inglewood High School Boys and Girls Athletics, I'm ready. We'll move quickly in the interest of time. All righty, here are our Inglewood Boys track team names and a picture of some of them. We can move to the next slide. Our Inglewood Girls track team and a picture of them. Our kids are incredibly, incredibly beautiful and engaging. I'm ready. And just another picture of the track team, different, different pictures of them with their medals. We're ready for the next slide. Our Inglewood softball team, varsity and JV. Our overall team MVP for softball was Destiny Arnold and most improved Jessica McEnty for our girls softball team. I'm ready. Here they are in all their glory. I'm ready. Okay, the Inglewood High School boys tennis team. There they are, looking like they're ready for uh, all the competitions coming up in the world. 
We're ready for the next slide. And our Pioneer League Boys Tennis Singles Champ, Rodan Gayez. Awesome. Our Inglewood Boys Baseball Team. There we go. Fantastic. Congratulations to our, athlete, our scholar athletes from Inglewood High School. So proud of them. Moving on to more, the Morningside Monarchs and the Boys and Girls Athletics um, from that school. I'm ready. Our Morningside Boys Soccer Team. Awesome. We're ready for the next slide. Girls Soccer Team Head Coach Lauren Perez. We're ready. And here we have Alexis Campos, who was named the Athlete of the Year by the Women of Will and also was named Scholar of the Year by the West Coast Sports Medicine Group. Fantastic. We're ready. Our Morningside Girls basketball team, Coach Morris, we're ready for the next slide. Another great picture of them. Fantastic picture. Looks like a professional sports team there. Here, another great picture of them. We're ready for the next slide. Our boys and girls track team, track, te track teams from Morningside High in all their glory. We're ready for the next slide. Here they are earning their trope, their, their medals. Ready for the next slide. Here they are again, showing off their medals. We're ready for the next slide. The track team taking incredible pictures. Here comes our softball team. If we hit enter, their picture will come up. Our girls varsity softball team, loving their uniforms. Ready for the next slide. Here's our boys baseball team. Fantastic. We want to extend incredible congratulations to the Morningside High School Boys and Girls Scholar Athletes and the athletics program there. So any questions and answers or comments, we are super happy to take them. But if we could all join again in commending our athletes from around the district and across the district, it takes a whole lot to be a scholar athlete. And they've all balanced academics and their sports um, just beautifully while maintaining their GPAs. Thank you, Dr. Torres. That concludes our report. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucas. I appreciate that. And I too want to congratulate our amazing scholar athletes and all of the great work that they have been able to do. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge all of our coaching staff, our athletic directors, our principals, our parents, our, our family members, our students, um, for all of their achievements. So congratulations to all. Let's open it up to our board members. If you have any questions or comments, we'll begin with Dr. McGee. Thank you, Dr. Torres. Um, considering I was one of those students that tried to play every sport while maintaining a decent GPA in high school, um, I really commend our young scholars and um, believe it or not, it will take you far. You know, it can take you um, to that major college or university on a scholarship. And more importantly, I think um, sports really has a way of teaching discipline and finding those individuals that you will perhaps have lifetime friendships with. So again, congratulations. Is there anyone else on the board that would like to weigh in? Guess I'm only athlete and scholar, but thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. McGee. I really appreciate it. So board members and community, we're gonna now transition to item eight of our board agenda. This is under reports and presentations. And we're gonna begin with item 8A. This is an update by our chief business official on cash flow. So welcome this evening, Mr. Guzman. Thank you, Dr. Torres. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to present today. Uh, and uh, good evening to our, uh, to our community, our board members um, and our cabinet and staff. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you today about the cash flow. Uh, next slide, please. Today we will be covering our recap of cash flow uh, projections. We'll look at the projections as well as uh, uh, cash borrowing options. Next slide, please. So starting with the cash flow recap. Next slide. 
Um, again, if, uh, some of these key terms, again, for uh, cash flow is a term that represents essentially uh, the cash position of the district. And um, we consistently monitor this to make sure that we are able to meet our financial obligations at any point in time uh, in the school year. Uh, so that's something that you all, uh, uh, often have to do. It's kind of like your own internal budget. You want to make sure that you have enough cash to, uh, uh, you know, pay any sort of uh, uh, liability that you have to pay or anything that you have to do during that month. So that's why it's very important. And we have to review it consistently as several factors may delay the receipt of cash. So we have to make sure if we don't see the cash that's supposed to come in, we have to figure out why to make sure that we have sufficient cash at any point in time to meet our financial obligations. Uh, sometimes we, uh, the state will impose deferrals. Uh, the good news is that, you know, for this fiscal year, we don't have deferrals, but um, the deferral is always something to, to know what it is. And essentially it's when the state defers our main source of revenue uh, from its consistent appropriation schedule. So uh, they sometimes will do that. And this year that's not anticipated. Um, and, and then if there are deferrals, oftentimes districts have to enter into what are called uh, uh, trans or tax and revenue anticipation notes. These are just advances of cash based upon verified revenues if they're deferred. So if the state's going to defer revenues, the district can uh, request a TRAN to have the cash come in uh, at when it would have come in so that we could cover the financial obligations. Uh, again, though this year, that's not something that looks like uh, will happen. Uh, next slide, please. So again, cash flow is extremely important because we ensure that the agency's projections are timely and accurate, that we know if, how much, and when does cash borrowing need to take place. And third, knowing all the internal and external borrowing options available, along with any restrictions and or timelines associated with each one. Next slide, please. So looking at the projections, next slide. Um, just wanted to touch upon the deferrals. There are no deferrals scheduled for this fiscal year, but the district did participate in a deferral in the previous fiscal year, and it has already made its uh, deferred payments uh, to the CSFA, which is the California School Finance Authority. Uh, and so that's all already covered. Um, next slide, please. Now, here's the actual cash flow. And as you can see, at the end of this month, we uh, or the month of April, the uh, cash ended at 69.3 million. And so we're looking very, very healthy in regards to cash. Um, but again, uh, just want to reiterate that these uh, the rest of those months are projections based on just fully expending everything that was uh, budgeted. Uh, next slide, please. Now, in regards to this, our cash balance as of last night uh, was $60.2 million in the general fund. So we just wanted to make sure that you were aware, you know, that's as a snapshot as of last night, uh, what, what that cash balance was. Next slide, please. Cash borrowing options. Next slide. So if uh, uh, we, we would need to continue to closely monitor cash flow, and uh, we do have other fund sources that we could borrow against if it was uh, needed. But in this uh, situation, we, we are looking as though the cash is okay for the remainder of this school year. Um, so we are fine with cash um, and the district has a healthy cash position and does not anticipate a need to borrow cash in fiscal year 21, 22. Um, now I do wanna mention here in this third bullet that it is important to note that much of the cash balance is as of a result of one-time funds. That's extremely important to under note because um, as one-time funds are expended, cash flow will need to be tracked even more carefully. So um, we did get one-time funds and so it's sitting there, but uh, once those get expended, um, then we go back to just kind of the, the regular operation. And in that sense, you want to very be very closely looking at cash and the deficit spending to make sure that you don't run into a cash issue. Um, so it's, uh, while there is uh, cash that the district has, a lot of it is again, as of the one time, because of the one-time funds, and once those are expended, they, they're one-time funds. So once those are gone, they're gone. Um, and so we want to make sure that we carefully monitor cash from here on out. And um, I think virtually uh, many districts in the state of California are in the same boat in the sense of, you know, uh, the cash uh, monitoring has to be uh, a, a lot more strict as we move on uh, through the fiscal years and spend all of the uh, one-time dollars. Uh, next slide, please. And that is the cash flow presentation. At this point in time, I'll Turn it back to you, Dr. Torres, for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guzman, as always. Um, I really appreciate your updates. Thank you again. And also, thank you so much for clarifying um, the one-time funds. I appreciate that. 
We're gonna open it up uh, for board member questions or comments. We're gonna begin with our board vice president, Dr. McGee. I don't have any comments other than to say thank you for um, the update. Uh, any other board member would like to weigh in, please do so at this time. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. McGee. Thank you, board members. Thank you again, Mr. Guzman. We appreciate your update. Board members and community, we're gonna move forward with item 8B. Uh, this is an interagency update. It's gonna be presented by our board member, Mr. Ernesto Castillo. Uh, welcome this evening, Mr. Castillo. Thank you, Dr. Torres, and I'll try to keep this report brief. Just wanted to update the community about some of the uh, community events that we've been having here. Um, last weekend, we had the uh, LA Philharmonic and the Getty Institute have an event all weekend for our community and for the communities around, surrounding our city um, that shared our own talent. We had our own students performing. Um, I believe our bands were performing as well too and all their um, organizations were able to partake to show what we're doing here in Inglewood and show the support we're showing to our kids um, in regards of music and cultural and art education. So I just want to encourage the community to make sure to always take take advantage of these events when they come across. Um, there's going to be a lot of events like this here in Inglewood and we got to make sure to show that we are here to take advantage of those opportunities um, as they may come. So with that, I'll conclude my interagency report. Thank you so much, Mr. Castillo. We appreciate your update. We're going to open it up uh, for board member questions or comments. Uh, board members, if you have any questions or comments for Mr. Castillo, can you please unmute? Okay, seeing none, thank you so much, um, Mr. Castillo, we appreciate it. Board members and community, we're gonna transition to item 8C of our board agenda. This is the district's facilities and maintenance progress report by Mr. Guzman, our chief business official. Welcome back, Mr. Guzman. Thank you, Dr. Torres. And uh, again, thank you to our community, our board members, our county administrator cabinet and our staff. Thank you all for the opportunity to present today regarding uh, the facilities and maintenance projects updates. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, so we wanted to touch base on just some of the sites that have been, um, uh, we've been receiving updates for the past couple of years here. And uh, the sites that, that we'd like to focus on today uh, are essentially Bennett Q, Sentinella, Frank B. Parent, Inglewood High School, Morningside High School, and Oak Street School. Um, next slide, please. So as we look at uh, Sentinella, the um, unused, there was an unused portable building at the front of the school. For those that are familiar with Sentinella, you would probably remember that building. <laughs> it didn't look too good. Um, and so we were able to remove it and make way for both additional parking spaces and a drop-off lane. So that's something that uh, was uh, was just improved there. And so we're really happy with that. There's also new wrought iron gates were also installed by our very own maintenance department that they installed it themselves. So we're really happy with that. They replaced the old chain link gates at the front of the school. And lastly, the new uh, upgraded LED marquee sign was installed and is currently finishing up the networking scope for full functionality. So if you drive by there, you'll see the new marquee and it should be fully functional here soon. We're just uh, getting the networking uh, up and running. So as you can see, those are some, uh, some good updates that have happened there. Uh, particularly the removal of that temporary portable that we've heard about. And so we were able to get that removed and uh, and we thank the maintenance department for their upgrades uh, to the campus as well. Next slide, please. So Morningside High School has continued, we've continued the uh, extensive work there. Uh, there's been a lot of work in Morningside High School and uh, that we're very proud of. Um, and there's continued to be more work that, that has to be done there. And we're really excited about that as well. Uh, but today we'd like to particularly focus on that fact that we had, uh, we were able to upgrade the campus marquee. Um, so at Morningside High School, um, if you drive by there now, um, you'll see the new electronic marquee. And we're really happy about that. It kind of gives it a, a different look and, and um, we're happy with, with what that's going with. Um, we also upgraded the pool window uh, security mesh um, and we've uh, had some landscape and hardscape repairs, uh, some security camera installations at the site as well uh, for security. Uh, and of course, the sound attenuation improvements, as well as the lunch shade structure improvements that were done at the campus there. So at Morning State High School, we, again, we continue the ongoing campus improvements. We started with the completed sound attenuation 
project. For those of you uh, that are uh, curious as to what that is, essentially, you know, we have a lot of uh, airport traffic uh, or airplane traffic, better said, uh, that passes in right on top of that school. And so we were able to partner with Los Angeles World Airport uh, to provide funding for uh, improving uh, the uh, or, or, or diminishing the sound inside the classroom or inside teaching spaces. Um, so we're thankful for Lawa's help in, in that aspect. And so that sound attenuation helps our students to be able to focus on, on the class and not be interrupted by an airplane flying above uh, their heads. And so we're, we're really excited there um, it, it, that, that these, a lot of this renovation was done. Our maintenance team was also responsible for painting the lunch shade structure. So we're thankful to our maintenance team and all their hard work all around the school district. Um, and we've also installed the new marquee, again, as I mentioned before, at the front of the admin building, along with security cameras to monitor uh, the front parking lot. Um, next slide, please. Oak Street School, we're uh, about wrapping up the construction there. We're really excited um, about what's what's been going on there. I know that that's been an exciting project. Uh, it's in its final stages. Um, and with building B and C in use already, uh, building A recently completed its renovation with new windows, doors, HVAC systems, and uh, ceilings for sound mitigation, as well as new flooring, marker boards, and renovated restrooms. Uh, currently, the new furniture is being delivered and assembled to be used for the next school year. So our kids will have those new furnitures, new classroom, new HVAC, new flooring, new painting. Uh, so it's, it's, it's looking really good. We're really excited about that. The parking lot was also expanded in addition to the new courtyard space. And, uh, we're, and we're also very, very uh, proud of the work that our maintenance team did uh, in regards to the exterior portables that were out there by replacing the panels and gutters. And uh, they were also able to paint and install new LED lights at, the, at each of the entrance doors. So if you were to drive by there now um, and look at those portables, they look really nice. All that work on the portable side was done by our maintenance department. And so we're really thankful for what they've done there. It's just been a, a collaborative effort between construction as well as maintenance. Um, and so uh, there's been a lot of good things done at Oak uh, and very soon we'll, uh, we'll be having some, as we put our finishing touches in building A, uh, eventually we'll be having some uh, very exciting announcements about the uh, just grand reopening there of just the, that building and uh, just some exciting things going on there at Oak Street. So we're really happy with the improvements there uh, and all the work that's been done. And lastly, um, next slide, please. Um, just this marquee refurbishment that's been going on across um, the uh, district. As you can see there, there, there's a couple of examples at Bennett Q. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to see that, that new marquee there at Centinella, Frank D. Parents, uh, Hutno as well, and um, Inglewood High School and Morningside High School. So uh, we're um, doing our best to just modernize some of that aspect so that communication is also improved. Uh, there's a lot of signs oftentimes or, or messages that we can display there. Um, along with all the other vehicles that we use for communication. Um, so we're just you know, excited to coordinate the replacement of marquees at our other campuses. But uh, again, we currently have been able to uh, get through uh, the marquee replacements at Bennett Q, Centinella, Parent, Hano, Inglewood High School, Morningside High School as well. Uh, the remaining uh, marquees, in case you're interested, they're currently in the design phase with a project starting to go out to bid in the fall of this year. So uh, some of these other uh, marquees will require a little more um, work. And so we have to then go through this uh, design phase and, and then go through the different particular steps that we need to go through to be able to go and get it out to bid in the fall of this year. So we're looking at that as well. Um, next slide, please. So that is definitely uh, not all of the work that's been done, uh, but it's just a brief update uh, of what's been going on at some of our sites and uh, the work that we've been doing. So at this point in time, I'll hand it back over to you, Dr. Torres, for any questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Guzman. We really appreciate the update. And it's exciting to see, um, you know, all of the wonderful investments and all of the great work that is happening across our district. Um, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge you, Mr. Guzman, your leadership, Mr. DeCastro, Dr. Kuna, um, and Mr. Arona for all of the great work in support of our facilities. And of course, our entire maintenance and operations team for the great work that they do um, each and every day. We're gonna open it up uh, for board member questions and comments. Uh, we'll begin with our board vice president, Dr. McGee. Thank you, Dr. Torres. I just have one pressing question because it's asked of me probably every time I'm at Morningside or someone 
that has attended Morningside or goes to Morningside, what is happening with our swimming pool? Can you give me an update on that? Sure, uh, of course, Dr. Mickey. thank you for that question. Um, so in order to fill it back, uh, as far as the swimming pool, there's a lot of repairs that, that still had to happen for uh, the patchwork uh, for the, so, to ensure that the uh, pool is safe. So essentially, I don't wanna get too much into the technical aspects here, but some of the, in, at some point in the past, uh, some of the uh, expansion joints were partially removed and partially cemented. Uh, of the pool itself. And so we have to make sure that all of that is uh, uh, correctly addressed. And so we do have a structural engineer uh, looking at this to make sure that all of it is done. And, you know, for instance, the, um, you know, delaminating of the plaster along the, on the floor and the walls and over some of the pool lights and uh, make sure that that's all good. And, and also the actual structural leaking and cracks in the concrete shield of the pool, we have to make sure that that's all uh, correctly um, uh, done. We, we, we recently received an update uh, from uh, one of the uh, uh, structural engineers that, were, that, that is looking at the pool. So we should have, um, so we've actually made some progress with the patching, but there is a lot more that needs to be done there. So we should, we can have definitely an update uh, for you at our next uh, meeting, but that is kind of the process right now. So there is some extensive patchwork that needs to be done. And um, if, if, we can definitely uh, speak speak on that. In fact, we have even some pictures and all that stuff that that uh, substantiate just the amount of work that still needs to be uh, done at that site. Thank you, and I certainly hope that many of our community um, members are listening because that is something that they would like to see um, back in use again. Um, are there any other board members that would like to weigh in on the facilities report? Sure. Thank you, Vice President. Um, I, I just like to say um, I visited uh, pretty much every campus that 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 you've uh, displayed, and I have to echo um, that the improvements have taken place, and it's a great sight to see. And so, thank you so much um, to you, Dr. Torres, to you, Mr. Guzman, um, also to the uh, amazing. Uh, custodial staff at, at Morningside, um, just briefly, uh, I believe it was 108th in Yukon. It was a black couch. And um, thanks to the Inglewood Public Works for coming out there and just removing that debris and as well as the Morningside custodial staff helping to keep that campus clean um, so that it's uh, presented visible from the streets in that well manner. So I just take my hats off to just the, you know, quick, thinking and just the hardworking uh, folks that we have there. So thank you. Great work, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Is there anyone else that would like to weigh in on the facilities report? Okay, Dr. Torres, I'll hand it over um, to you. Thank you so much, Dr. McGee. Um, I appreciate uh, your comments, Dr. McGee, Mr. Myers. Um, thank you so much. And Mr. Guzman, Wonderful job this evening in providing us with an update. Thank you. Board members and community, we're gonna transition to our last uh, report presentation. This is under item 8D of our board agenda. This is our English learner annual update and reclassification student recognition presented by Dr. Lucas and Mr. Perez. So welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Torres. Um, I am incredibly excited to introduce Mr. Miguel Perez, Director of K-12 English Learner Services. Tonight, we will celebrate the reclassification of many of our students and an update on the ELD services that are, I'm sorry, the English Learner Services that are happening in the district. Mr. Perez, I would like to hand this over to you. Thank you, Dr. Lucas. It is my extreme pleasure well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Torres, Dr. Lucas, cabinet, and of course our illustrious uh, trustees and, um, and board vice president and president. Uh, 
Um, this is our second annual uh, recap of the recognition for reclassification. But Dr. Torres had a brilliant idea when we were at a conference last week, and that is, why don't we give an end, uh, a year-end review of what happened this year with our uh, English learners and talk about next steps. So I'm deeply excited to talk about that. Next slide, please. So today's agenda, I have three items, the year in review for English learner services, reclassification honorees, and uh, coming in 2023 school year. Next slide, please. So I, I would say that our crowning achievement for our English learner department was the development of the English learner master plan. We did share it earlier in the year. And the key parts of it is it is our framework, our, our guide to how we're going to improve English learner instruction throughout the district. So we're really excited. We've already begun to implement many of the elements within the plan, and we're looking forward to continuing to add more layers to that. Next slide, please. As you can see, we already started our professional development timelines. Uh, we started uh, back in the beginning of December with DigiCoach PD, which enhanced English learner observations. We had a Nearpod training in January, elevation strategies at the secondary levels. We had a literacy summit, which focused on uh, English learner literacy skills. The, D, uh, the dual language programs had an Adelante benchmark training for their curriculum. We also had a wonderful instructional memo that went out that really explained the, the differences to all the sites, the differences between integrated ELD and designated ELD, which was well received. We had an iStation training, again, also for our DI program, our dual language program. And then at the secondary levels, one of my really exciting uh, projects, what we call in Ed Services, my problem of practice, was secondary ELD data analysis. So we've been doing a deep dive into analyzing student data and performance at our secondary levels. We've had two meetings thus far, one with Morningside and one with Inglewood High, and, and they're producing wonderful dialogue and conversations that again will improve uh, our second language learners' outcomes. Next slide, please. Here's a really exciting part for me where we get to talk about reclassification. And again, the criteria we have, I won't go through it all, but we have set criteria uh, that we outline for reclassif uh, reclassification of our English learners to change from English learners to proficient English uh, learners. Um, next slide, please. With the wonderful work of one of our, our collaborators, Dr. Calhoun, she developed a very beautiful graphic that illustrates the previous slide. This graphic here, really um, what we learned from our data chats at the secondaries is some of the students and personnel didn't, weren't really clear about the rotation process. So in, with collaboration, we created a graphic that was gonna simplify this and, we, and, and Dr. Lucas had a brilliant idea of we're going to make posters of these of this uh, presentation of this particular uh, slide here to give to the schools and to really use it as a as a platform to educating uh, the students, the teachers, and the community about the reclassification process. Next slide, please. And without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce the 2021 uh, redesignation class. Here we are for uh, Bennett Q, Principal uh, Ms. Appleton. Here are our recipients. Yay! Next slide, please. For Sentinella, Principal Burris. And I'm going to say, as she highlighted earlier in her presentation, Principal Burris and the Sentinella community has had the highest number of reclassified students in the district two years in a row. Way to go, uh, Ms. Burris. Also, I got to give a props to our teachers, our teachers who have done an amazing job working with our second language learners through their strong efforts, even through this, these COVID uh, learning years. They've done an amazing job. So give it up to the Sentinella community for all their hard work. Next slide, please. Uh, here we got uh, Ms. Nafeld at Frank D. Parent. Next slide, please. At Highland, our new principal, Ms. Trevino Jones, had uh, three recipients. Congratulations. Thank you. Next slide, please. Our new principal at Hutton, Ms. Harbuth, had two recipients. 
great job. Next slide, please. Ms. Green at uh, Kelso with three recipients. Congratulations. Next slide, please. Lati, another one of our high earners, Mr. Tilly and Ms. Pitts out there. Great job for Lati Heda. Next slide, please. Oak Street School, my old stopping ground. Great job, Dr. O'Grady. Next slide, please. Uh, Payne is giving Sentinel a run for its money. Dr. Coffey out there with a large number of recipients. Great job. Next slide, please. Uh, Ms. Calhoun at Warren Lane, great job. I might say, I want to put it uh, uh, really important to recognize that Warren Lane and Parent don't have many English learners. They have low numbers. So when you see one in one, that's a great achievement. That's, that's one of about seven kids that they have out there. So great job, Ms. Uh, Ms. Calhoun. Next slide, please. Um, uh, Woodworth Monroe, TK8, uh, Mr. Caldwell, great job. Him and Mr. Castillo, Carrillo, I'm sorry. Next slide, please. At Worthington, Mr. Gregory. Next slide, please. At Crozier, Ms. Branch. Great job. Next slide, please. City Honors, another school with very low numbers. Great job, uh, Dr. Araya. Next slide, please. Ms. Debbie Tate at Inglewood High School. Next slide, please. At Morningside High School, Mr. Grego. Next slide. And a very big special thanks and appreciations, number one, to our illustrious county administrator, Dr. Erica Torres, for her unwavering support of the English learners in our community, really making them a priority and a, a good big shout out. So thank you so much, Dr. Torres. I wanna also highlight Ms. Atatoa and Ms. Rogers. They are our LPAC coaches. They've helped tremendously with reclassification process and really identifying kids. This work could not have been done without them. So I really wanna give a shout out. And it, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the amazing support and hard work that Dr. Lucas really exemplifies and really empowers me to challenge my, me to challenge our community to continue reclassifying and working hard and supporting English language learners. So give it up to Dr. Lucas and everyone on this slide. Next slide, please. So what's coming? So in 2023, we have many amazing uh, opportunities coming up and I'm excited to share those uh, as kind of a way to have you uh, hold me accountable for my, my job here at Inglewood High. One thing that we've identified that's really critical to our work is we've created an ELD decision tree. What the decision tree is gonna do is it's gonna be a, a, a matrix that is it's gonna have to help us identify uh, what ELD courses uh, students will be enrolled in based on their uh, achievement data, something that we haven't had in many years, so it's coming back. We've I've worked with Dr. Tanver from CCEE to develop this and Ms. Melissa Williams, so we're excited. We're going to present it to Dr. Lucas uh, next week uh, for her blessing, and then we'll be sharing it with the high schools and the secondary schools. Also, we are uh, updating our reclassification to criteria by grade span. So we're going to have a TK through second criteria update and our third to 12th grade. So we're excited that we're going to really be able to pinpoint the needs and, and the achievements of our students. We are in the market for piloting and adopting a new ELD curriculum. We've also identified one of our needs at the secondary is a need for a strong curriculum that's going to address our LTELs, which is our long-term English learners, and our newcomers. So we're going to look at two different sets of curriculum to really fit the needs and to tailor the learning for our kids and their unique learning. So it's really critical. And one thing that I'm most excited about uh, two things, actually. One is our English learner shadowing. Next year, we plan on doing walkthroughs and shadowing the day in life of an English learner. And the goal of that is to see what they see on a daily basis, really try to understand where the gaps in their learning are and address those needs. Something that's been very uh, popular among um, many districts na uh, nationwide. We learned about it at a conference and uh, through the support with Dr. Lucas and also with uh, Dr. Goolsby, we're gonna work on this deeply next year and really address those needs by looking at what, what the challenges are and really interviewing students and their families to really support their needs. 
Next slide, please. And one of the big and really exciting things is uh, we also received a federal grant called ISELA, the Engage California English Learners Through the Arts. Arts is one of my passion along with English learners. And through LACO, we were uh, we got a $100,000 grant. It's a five-year grant. Uh, they're going to focus on Oak Street and Worthington. We, those are two schools with our highest number of English learners. In my work with in a conference with Dr. Torres, she would like to see this expanded throughout the district. So we're going to, what we call, go slow to go fast. We're going to pilot the, the work with our two schools and see how we're going to expand to our other schools because we know what's good for English learners at all schools will be good for all of our students. So the Isela project provides research and evidence-based PD and family literacy. It will, it's really going to integrate the arts with the learning and to embed um, more opportunities for our, our students to engage in learning activities that are fun and arts filled. Next slide, please. So there is a five-year scope and sequence. I can this year is we have introductions with our leadership teams. Year two is going to be visual and media arts with three days of professional development. Year three will be dance and movement with three days of professional development. Year four, music and voice arts. And year five, theater arts. So it's a very integrated and comprehensive approach year by year. And we hope that we see the same results we've seen at other districts where the, the, the arts really come alive at those schools. And we really wanna see how we can support our English learners through those arts mediums. Next slide, please. And that concludes my presentation for everybody. I'm really excited again to have the opportunity just to share what we're doing with our English learners communities and ways that we're going to improve the achievements here at Inglewood Unified. And with that, Dr. Lucas, I hand it to you. Mr. Perez, thank you for that really thorough, incredible report. And I think if we could all join again in celebrating our students who reclassified, that's a huge accomplishment. It takes a lot of work on their part and on the part of their teachers and site administrators. So thank you again, Mr. Perez, really, really great report. Dr. Torres, may I give it back to you? Thank you so much, Dr. Lucas, and congratulations, Mr. Perez. I really appreciate your update. and. I really feel your passion, your enthusiasm. So thank you so much for the great work that you do each and every day. Congratulations to our amazing students. We're so proud of them and all of their achievements. I wanna also thank their principals and all of their amazing teachers for the great work. I'm super excited about the grant that you referenced, Mr. Perez. And um, like you mentioned, this is something that we want to pilot and expand at all of our school sites. So this is a wonderful resource to us as a district. And I want to thank the Los Angeles County Office of Education um, for partnering with us in this endeavor. So on that note, we're going to open it up uh, for board member questions or comments. We'll begin with our board vice president, Dr. McGee. Thank you, Dr. Torres. I'm gonna to open it up to the board members. Um, if you would like to weigh in on the um, report, please do so at this moment. Well, Dr. Torres, I'm just gonna ditto everything you just said because I don't think Mr. Perez could ever not give a report with the level of enthusiasm that he brings. So thank you so much for just staying excited about the work that you do. It can be pretty daunting at times, but you are always on such a high and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. McGee. I appreciate your comment. Congratulations, Mr. Perez. We appreciate your update. Thank you. You're welcome. Board members and community, we're gonna to transition to item number nine of our board agenda. This is under public hearing. So we have a public hearing to receive public comments regarding increased statutory school facility fees imposed on new residential and commercial industrial construction. So the public hearing will be open at 6.31 p.m. And we're now gonna hear public Comments, Ms. Zambrano, do we have any public comments on the public hearing under board agenda item 9A? 
Yes, we do, Dr. Torres. We have two public comments for public hearing. The first public comment is for Mr. John Hughes. Mr. Hughes, please raise your hands so our IT department can designate you as speaker for public comment. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes, you have three minutes. You may begin with your public comment. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. You may begin. Okay, thank you. Um, it's my understanding that this um, item is designed to raise the fees um, for future uh, construction, residential, and as well as uh, the uh, commercial. And it's interesting because we've, we've raised fees um, several times over the years. In terms of direct measures, we had Measure K and then subsequently GG and subsequently Measure I. Um, and coupled with LEWA funds, there's quite a bit of, of revenue um, in excess of half a billion dollars on paper and more than that when you, when you factor in um, other costs. Um, and I, my question, I guess, would be with this, this is based on future construction. Um, what are the projections? Because we constantly hear uh, enrollment is low. Enrollment is declining, yet here is a study um, which, um, which they acknowledge that they're projecting an increase in student enrollment and they're attributing that to the new and future um, years. So when we close schools, yet there is uh, an admitted projected growth that will create uh, new facility needs in terms of uh, funding seems to be a contradiction there. Seems to be like it's a target there that it's not that we don't realize that new structures will be built and new populations of students will return to the city. Is that we've decided that we only want them in certain areas. And to me, that's a disservice to the uh, traditional area if a school or a new constructed school were in that area, those students would welcome that area as well. So I'm just, I'm just a little confused on the um, projections being uh, contradictory, what has been stated to use um, in terms of justifying closing schools, studies that justify that, and then we pay for other studies when we want revenue um, for new construction, and so which 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 one works? I mean, it's either it's either we're not going to have projected new populations into the city, or or we we are. And if we are, then how does that trump closing a school currently when we're projecting new schools? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. You may now lower your hand. Our second public comment for public hearing is from Mrs. Cheryl Matthews. Mrs. Matthews, please raise your hands. Our IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Thank you, Mrs. Matthews. You have three minutes. You may begin with your public comment. Please unmute yourself, Mrs. Matthews. Mrs. Matthews, are you with us? Um, she was here a few minutes ago. Mrs. Matthews, I see you. Can you unmute yourself so you can begin with your public comment for public hearing? Okay, just got the unmute button, sorry. Thank you, you may begin now, thank you. All right, good evening, everybody. I, I, I actually am going to piggyback on some of the things that Mr. Hughes just uh, brought up. I, I reviewed this increase for statutory school facility fees and I'm a little curious myself as I was going through my personal property taxes. And in looking at my property taxes, I see that I've got almost $1,100 a year that I'm paying back in bond measures and taxes for the school. And here we are being presented with another fee. I am trying to determine 
um, where the funds that have been previously received, where those have gone, I couldn't find a budget that, or I was trying to look at the budget to see where this information was that showed where our bond and taxes and other uh, revenues have been directed. And I'm also trying to figure out, we got an analysis for proposed um, new residential and, and new commercial, but I can't find an analysis on the impact of closing schools or impacts of closing, it, particularly Warren Lane, AKA Daniel Freeman, which is in the district that I belong to. Um, it seems that closing this school will leave us without a school in this district. And I'm curious as to whether this facility fees that are being imposed are to reconstruct or reopen another school. Um, on top of that, I'm trying to also see whether or not there's anything being put in place that will help us to direct those monies, direct those bond fees, direct those taxes, and help us to increase some of the programs that should be available in our school district. I hear a lot of things and a lot of accolades being afforded to our wonderful students, our wonderful teachers, their parents, and to community members. Um, but I'm really interested in some of the more progressive classes and more progressive programs that we could be building in um, instead of looking to build new schools. Um, so this is of concern to me, and I'd really like to know from someone where I can go to find the information that I'm looking for, especially uh, where that analysis is that uh, allows the school closures um, without too much community um, comment. And then I'll hold my other comment um, for the next round. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Matthews. You may now lower your hand. Dr. Torres, that concludes the public comments for, um, for public hearing tonight. Thank you so much, Ms. Zambrano. Our public hearing is now closed at 6.38 p.m. Board members and community, we're gonna move on to item 10 of our board agenda. This is public comments on agendized and non-agendized items. The county administrator and board of education welcome input from the public. Speakers wishing to address the county administrator and board on agenda and non-agenda topics must complete the public comment submission form prior to the county administrator commencing the public comment period under agenda item 10. Written comments submitted to the county administrator and board will no longer be read aloud by staff during the board public comment period. Instead, written comments will be provided to the county administrator and to the board of education for their consideration. The submission form is available on the district's website at inglewoodusd.com. Three minutes will be allotted to each speaker and a maximum of 30 minutes for public comment on agenda items and a maximum of 30 minutes for public comment on non-agenda items will be allotted during the public comment period. If the public comment cards exceed 10 cards per section, the county administrator may reduce the time allowed from three minutes to either two minutes or one minute per person to hear from more speakers. The guidelines for public comment will be in accordance with board bylaw 9323. Ms. Zambrano, do we have any public comments on agenda or non-agenda items? Yes, we do, Dr. Torres, because we have exceeded more than 10 public comment cards for non-agenda items. The time has been reduced to one minute per person to hear from each speaker. This adjustment of time is in accordance with guideline or policy bylaw 9323 for public comments. Our first public comment is from Mr. Alexander. Mr. Alexander, please raise your, your hands. Our IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. You have one minute. You may begin your public comment. Mr. Alexander, please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself so you may begin with your public comment. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. 
Yes, um, my name is Ethel Alexander. I am a 25 year homeowner in the Morningside Park area. And this is the statement that I would like to make. Warren Lane, AKA Daniel Freeman Elementary School should have been declared a historical landmark. It was named after the founder of Inglewood. Instead, it is being destroyed in a disrespectful and callous manner. Fathers, mothers, grandmothers, caregivers are invested in morning invested in Morningside Park are being treated like intruders instead of taxpayers who help keep schools open. The question still remains: what actions were taken and money spent to recruit students at Warren Lane? Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Alexander. You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from CJ Fleming. Um, Mr. Fleming, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. You have one minute, you may begin with your public comment. Please unmute yourself. Beautiful, can you hear me? Yes, you, you may begin with your public comment now. Awesome. So I am a new resident to Morningside Park and my comment is also in, um, in regards to the closure at Warren Lane. Um, I was told um, that, that the notification for this closure was given in a, in a book bag to children on the day that this announcement was to be made. As a new resident of the, of the community and a firm believer that schools and education are the foundation of community, how in the world are we supposed to understand or know or participate in any decision-making process that's gonna directly affect the value of our property, the level of our engagement in community and the education of our children. Me and my wife are Mr. Fleming, I think we lost- Process for what happens next. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. Uh, you may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Allison Fleming. Ms. Fleming, please raise your hands for IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Great. Please unmute yourself. You, may, you have one minute. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. You, you may begin now. I'm a resident of Morningside Park. I live just three blocks from Warren Lane, and I'm asking you to rescind the decision to close the school. Given this latest update about the added fees and taxes, I'm wondering what your response is to those of us asking why we'll no longer have a public school option in Morningside Park. As school board members, your job is to ensure that school districts are responsive to the values, beliefs, and priorities of the community you serve, and it's clear that our priorities are not being heard or represented. To be frank, as a stakeholder, I've been disappointed with the lack of outreach and consideration you've shown to our community about the pending closure. I'm aware of the need to make these adjustments to the district due to low enrollment, but I was not made aware of the pending closure or any of the details surrounding the closure until my neighbors began organizing on behalf of our young students. Why haven't any of you been communicating with the communities that you serve? Why hasn't anyone responded to our requests for meetings? Again, closing Warren Lane leaves our zip code without a public elementary school, and the next closest elementary school for our neighborhood is in LAUSD, which I have to assume is where most parents Thank you, Ms. Fleming. That concludes your comments for tonight. Um, our next public comment is from Taj Pau. Mr. Pau, please raise your, your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mr. Pau, you have one minute. You may begin with your public comment. Are you with us, Mr. Pau? Please unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin now. I'd like to ask for an investigation into the obstacles to keep the community and parents from attending these school board meetings. We have personally been informing parents on how to log on to these Zoom meetings. It's very clear that it's intentional efforts from the school district to exclude community as well as parents from these meetings. They're very aware that there is no PTA for this community or this school. Yet Ms. Torres claims she wants to engage with our community. She's had countless uh, opportunities to come to rallies. She could have responded to our petition that is still growing. 
Uh, we're going to continue to have rallies. I want everyone to know we will be at Warren Lane every Friday, continuing to protest against the closure of this school. We will also have a community meeting Saturday at 10 a.m. Please tune in to KPFK 90.7. We'll be on the radio at 9 a.m. discussing the battle to save historic Black Inglewood School, Warren Lane. Thank you. Saturday. Thank you, Mr. Pope. You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Monica McClellan. Mrs. McClellan, are you with us? Please raise your hands for IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Thank you. Uh, please unmute yourself. You have one minute. You may begin. Can you hear us? Please unmute yourself, Ms. McClellan. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes you may begin with your public comment. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to know, um, let you know that, as she said, my name is Monica McClanahan. I'm alumni from uh, Daniel Freeman Elementary School, 1965, and have been in Inglewood neighborhood ever since. You're saying that you need to close this school, but I was just wondering, could a possible solution be that you have a pre-K uh, school set up there or built there? Kids can go from pre-K all the way through, um, I guess they stop at fifth grade now. My day was sixth grade. And that would help to improve en enrollment. Maybe you can think about a school of Scientologies for uh, the younger children, a school of science that can help them. I heard that you had something to do with the STEM program. It's always great to educate children by science and have engineers come on out, just like at uh, Hawthorne High School, they have a school of engineering now. Uh, another thing you might consider is maybe a special needs um, program to happen at that school. Basically, education is the key. Martin Luther King fought for this. The people who live in that community, my aunt's been over there since the 60s. They don't deserve to have an apartment building there. They've been paying taxes all these years and keeping Inglewood going. Thank you. For tonight. Thank you. Our next public comment is from Michelle Hewitt. Ms. Hewitt, please raise your hand so our IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Ms. Hewitt, you have one minute. Can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Please unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, you may begin with your public comment now. Good afternoon. I reside in Morningside Park community. My daughter is a Daniel Freeman alumni. I'm concerned to learn of the closure of Warren Lane Elementary School. If the school closes, there will be no public elementary school in the 90305 area. The teachers and students will be displaced. Please, Ms. Torres, rescind your decision to close Warren Lane Elementary School. Making improvements to the school and imp implementing programs would get enrollment up to where it needs to be. Or replace the school with a special needs school or an adult school or even a charter school. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hewitt. You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Ms. Kiara Ballard. Mrs. Kiara, Please raise your hands or our IT department can designate you a speaker for public comment. Can you, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear us, Ms. Kira? Please unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you may begin with your public comment now. My name is Kiara Bullard and I'm a 12th grade student at City Honors International Prep School. I am also involved in the Alliance Student Empowerment Program where we learn about leadership. I am calling in today to ask the school board to make basic life skills more accessible to all high school students. We want classes that better prepare us to deal with the day-to-day -day responsibilities of adulthood. I urge the board to make sure that all high schools in Inglewood Unified offer a class on financial literacy and career prep that fulfills our A through G requirements. As a student athlete, my ultimate goal is to get a higher education, then bring my knowledge back to my community. But as a youth growing up in Inglewood, I faced lack of resources and discrimination. In public spaces, people have looked at me differently, and it's not always because of my adult. It's also because they've had opportunities to experience and learn with classes that they gravitate towards and are able to find talent in. Whereas I haven't had those opportunities and would like to make it possible for the generations that will come after me. Having financial literacy implemented into schools will make people make some financial decisions outside of high school. 
Once again, I would like to urge the board to make sure all Inglewood Unified Schools are offer classes like financial literacy and career prep that fulfill our eighth through G requirements. Thank you for your time, and I hope you would take my statement into consideration. Thank you, Ms. Kiara. You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Sigli Amadou. Um, Mr. Amadou, please raise your hand so our IT department can designate you as speaker for public comment. Or can you please unmute yourself. Are you with us? Can you hear me? Sigli, um, please un unmute yourself. Can you hear us? Uh, hello? Yes, okay, I can hear you. you. You may begin with your public comment. Uh, my name is Sigi Yamadu. Uh, I'm a senior at Inglewood High School. I'm also a part of the Alliance program that empowers students, especially student athletes, to bring in change to our school. Uh, some of the things we have been discussing, discussing is bringing in some more programs and bringing in more opportunities to school like Inglewood. Uh, we want to have more basic life skills, potentially teach our students about co college at an earlier start, maybe sophomore or junior year, instead of just teaching our students maybe uh, senior year. By having all these programs at Englewood High School, it might also be able to drive in some more students so our enrollment rate can go a little higher. And, I, uh, and that's about it. And I hope y'all uh, look forward to actually working with us so we can bring all these programs to Englewood High School or any Englewood District schools. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Amadou, you can now lower your hand. Our next public comment is for Mr. John Hughes. Mr. Hughes, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mr. Hughes, please unmute yourself. Can you hear us? You have one minute. Mr. Hughes? Yes. You may begin now. Okay, thank you. I would just like to say micro, uh, Warren Lane is a microcosm of the district. Three out of the four um, selected principals were first-time principals, and the district has been transitory in its leadership from state receivership, as we have had numerous, more than seven uh, leaders. This is instability. We currently have um, CBOs that's leaving. We have no one in HR. We have no one in student support services. And all of these are imported to the, by the county. And the county says that we're doing better. Well, how do we do better when we don't have stability or infrastructure? And as far as the school itself, we all know and agree that that school should not be closed. And we demand that it is the decision to close it be rescinded because it did not follow the proper protocols because most of this is constituted by um, consultants and the consultant that ran the last study was hired by a lawyer that is employed by the district. It's too many things that's going on, and we will uncover all of it. So we need to stop the closure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Nicholas Wiggins. Um, Mr. Wiggins, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Please unmute yourself. Can you hear us, Mr. Wiggins? Hello. Hi, um, you may begin with your public comment. You have one minute. My name is Nick Wiggins, and I'm a 12th grade student at City Honors International Preparatory School. I'm calling in today to ask the school board to make basic life skills more accessible to all high school students. I urge the board to make sure that all high school uh, in Inglewood Unified offer a class on financial literacy that fulfills our A2G requirements, and that also all high schools in Inglewood Unified offer a class on how to get a job as well as driver's ed that students can be eligible for and take before graduation. As a student athlete, my ultimate goal is to be as prepared for life as possible with or without sports. But as a youth growing up in Inglewood, I face challenges like lack of resources, lack of support, and more encouragement towards negative things than positive. Students need more basic life skills like financial literacy, driver's ed, and how to get a job because we come across these obstacles more than what's being taught in our school system now. In closing, I urge that all high schools in Inglewood Unified offer a class on financial literacy, how to get a job, and driver's ed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wiggins. And you may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Mr. Taj Powell. Mr. Powell, please raise your hands. Our IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mr. Powell, please unmute yourself. Can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, uh, you have one minute. You may begin with your public comment. 
I just wanted to remind people we are still fighting. There will be rallies. Uh, I think I might have gotten cut off. I want everyone to tune into KPFK 90.7 this Saturday at 9 a.m. We will be discussing the battle to save historic Black Inglewood School, Warren Lane Elementary School. We will also be attending the final graduation in protest of the closure. I also want to close by just saying our kids deserve consistent education. They deserve continuity. They do not deserve to be shuffled around while Ms. Torres closes our schools one by one. This is not helpful to our kids. Most of them were not even born when this district went into receivership. I'm gonna to continue to fight for the kids because they are not old enough to fight for themselves. I strongly encourage all school board members to come in support of our community and also fight for the children. I'm also extending this invitation to Miss Naomi Hammonds, although I know you need Miss Torres's permission. I hope you will have a change of heart and choose to come to the community that you are supposed to be serving. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul. You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Fredricia Dixon. Um, Ms. Dixon, please raise your hand so our IT department could designate you as a speaker for public comment. Please unmute yourself. Can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you have one minute. You may begin with your public comment. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, I want to address Ms. Erica Torres. Ms. Torres, to be honest, when you first came to Inglewood, I was so hopeful about you being able to positively impact our students and create some curriculum and really get our school system back on the right track. But you have shown yourself to be someone who is unqualified for this position. I'm extremely disappointed in you. I'm asking you if you could reconsider closing Warren Lane. Of course, the community wants Warren Lane to stay open. Um, some of your actions actually make you appear to be racist, considering the fact that Warren Lane is our only predominantly Black elementary school in Inglewood. And to our board, we elected you all to advocate on our behalf and to speak up for us, but you guys have not made any sincere or serious attempt to stand in solidarity with the community. You haven't even tried to figure out ways in which we could keep this school open. So if you are running uh, for re-election, um, I just encourage you to have a second thought and try to be on the side of the people of Inglewood, especially if you want to maintain your position on this board. Thank, thank you, Mrs. Dixon. That concludes uh, your public comment for tonight. Um, you, you may lower your hand now. Our next public comment is from Mary Johnson. Mrs. Johnson, if you're with us, can you please raise your hands for our IT department to designate you as a speaker for a public comment? Mrs. Johnson, I'm not sure if that's the US Zoom user. IT can um, you want to unmute, let her, the Zoom user in. Mrs. Johnson, please unmute yourself. Mrs. Johnson, um, I see as a student user, I'm not sure if that's you. Um, can all the other participants that already spoke, can you please lower your hand so we're able to identify the, the public speakers for the comments? I don't think she's with us. Um, moving on to the next public comment is from Ms. Cheryl Matthews. Mrs. Matthews, can you please raise your hands for IT department and designate you as a speaker for public comment? Mrs. Matthew, please unmute yourself. Can you hear us? Yes, the IT is a little bit slow. <laughs> I, have one, I have one minute. You may begin with your public comment. All right, then. Um, as reiterated throughout this entire evening, it's more than evident that there is concerns about the closure of Warren Lane, AKA Daniel Freeman. From a historic standpoint, from the standpoint of it being the only Black, predominantly Black uh, school here in the district, and from the standpoint of looking at a budget of in excess of 60.2 million and not that I can see and that I've been able to find a plan for uh, ending our receivership. I'm also wondering whether or not our scores are up. We're talking about building new schools and residential and commercial, but where are we 
putting our money when it comes to our children. You've had kids on here tonight that have talked about programs that they desire. It may not be an English learning situation, but it is a situation where the children are crying out. So I think these are things that need to stop the closure of Warren Lane. Use that property to, to address some of these concerns. Thank you, Mrs. Mathis. Can you may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Wesley Newman. Um, Mr. Newman, please raise your hands or IT department could designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mr. Newman, can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Yes, I, I can hear you. Thank you. You may begin. You have one minute with your public comment. Thank you. And, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Wesley Newman. Um, I had the opportunity to sit on that school closure committee. Um, I, I, I initially felt compelled to sit on the committee thinking that I would uh, bring some, some value and some goodness uh, to the community, right? Um, I must admit that I was a, a novice uh, being on the committee, not really understanding the rules of engagement. Uh, however, I was very vocal. I was uh, voted the chairman. Uh, the, and let me just preface this. The, the recommendation was not the committee's recommendation. It was total schools, the consultant's recommendation that we voted on. Uh, the one comforting thing about that is that we were assured that before any decision was made that, that the school district would, would, would reach out to the community at Warren Lane, the people at Morningside Park to get their input before any decision was, any final decision was made. And I'm disappointed that that did not happen. Thank you, Mr. Newman. That concludes your time for tonight. Can you please lower your hand now? Our next public comment is from Kenya, K-N-Y-A. You can also spell their name completely. If you're with us, can you please raise your hands or IT department will let you um, in the meeting so you can provide public comments. I don't believe they're, they're with us. Our next public comment is from Georgina Morales. Mrs. Morales, can please raise your hands for IT department can designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mrs. Morales, if you're with us, can you please raise your hand. I don't think she's with us. Our next public comment is from Alexis Campos. Uh, Alexis, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speak for, speaker for public comment. Alexis, um, can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Alexis, can you hear us? Please unmute yourself. I, I see that you're with us. Can you please unmute yourself? Alexis, can, if you can hear us, can you please unmute yourself? We will come back to you toward, um, towards the end. Um, I, I know you're with us. I'm not sure if you're having problems connecting, but our next public speaker is from Elijah Anderson. Elijah, please raise your, your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Elijah, can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we could hear you. You have one minute. You uh, want your public comment. Okay. Hi, I'm a student at City of Honors, and I'm also part of the Alliance program. I'm here today to fight for more for black Sanders. I believe in national literacy because not only how to manage your money, it is really easy to lose your money. But learning in high school, how to manage it, grow it, it gives you a head start on Then once you get to college, you have an understanding of what it will be about. A struggle for me is saving money. I feel that like financial literacy with the class being taught in high school, saving money wouldn't be such a struggle for me. Lastly, a life goal of mine is having a wealthy family. And without knowing the right techniques and managing it, it would be hard for me to achieve my goal. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Elijah. 
You may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Ahmad Carnell. Ahmad, if you're with us, can you please raise your hands for our IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment? If you're with us, can you please raise your hand, Mr. Carnell? I, I don't think he's with us. Our next public comment is from Natalia. Natalia, please raise your hands for IT department and designate you as a speaker for public comment if you're with us. Natalia, if you're with us, please raise your hand. I don't believe she's with us either. Our next public comment is from Imani Matoyer. Imani, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as speaker for public comment. Imani, if you're here, please raise your hand. I don't believe um, she's here either. Our next public comment is from Destiny Arnold. Destiny, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Destiny, if you're with us, please raise your hand. She's not with us neither. Our next public comment is from Morris Phillips. Mr. Phillips, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mr. Morris, if you're with us, can you please raise your hand? I don't think he's with us either. The next public comment is from Anna Ayala. Ms. Ayala, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Mrs. Ayala, if you're with us, can you please raise your hand? She's not with us. Our next public comment is from Rhonda Coconerly. Rhonda, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Rhonda, if you're here, please raise your hand. She's not with us. Our next public comment is from Christian Flagg. Mr. Christian, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Great, I see you. Can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Christian, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. you have one minute. You may begin with your public comment. Uh, good evening, folks. My name is Christian Flagg, Director of Training at Community Coalition, and I'm one of the lead facilitators uh, of the Alliance program. And it's, it's really designed to give scholar athletes an, an opportunity to explore issues of social justice, uh, theories of change, and to develop their leadership and engage in community organizing and advocacy ac activities that's, that's uh, focused on improving conditions in the communities that they live in. And as, as you can hear, right, these activities are led by students, right? And they include things like deep social investigation and research in which these young people actually were able to gather over 400 survey responses from their peers and really lift up what emerged out of that. Furthermore, it, it involves activities like this, civic engagement, where they learn how to really engage and elevate the, their voice. So I just wanna underscore the power of our youth leaders and really uh, encourage you to listen to them and they're looking for an opportunity to engage with you uh, directly on a future date. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fleck. Thank you. Um, you may now lower your hand. Our next public comment is from Kenyan Aguirre. Kenyan, if you're with us, um, please raise your hands for IT department and designate you as a speaker for public comment. Great, I see your hand. Um, please unmute yourself, can you hear us? Kenyan, can you hear us? Please unmute yourself. Hello. Yes, hi. You have one minute. You may begin with your public comment. Uh, yeah, um, my name is Kenyon Eggers. I'm a junior. I go to City Honors. And my statement today is about the uh, school board 
uh, I want you guys to uh, help us make a change in our schools. We want uh, basic life skill classes more accessible to us. Uh, like he said earlier, um, the Alliance, we did a survey and 400 high school students took the survey and we found out that drivers ed, financial literacy and career prep are what students want brought to their schools here in IUSD. Um, we feel as our current level of education at our school can be improved with your help. These guys are important because we teenagers need a strong stepping stone to a wealthy long-term life and it can start in high school with those classes and we can use those classes to our advantage. Uh, personally, I've seen students with lack of support and resources give up on their passion and I don't want to see that no more. So I want to make a change. And yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. And now we're going to go back with uh, Alexis Campos. Um, Alexis, please raise your hands for IT department to designate you as a speaker for public comment. Can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, you have one minute. You may be going to public comment. <laughs> Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexis Campos. I am a 12th grade. I'm in 12th grade student at Morningside High School. I'm calling in today to ask the school board to make basic life skills more accessible to all high school students. We want and we need classes that will better prepare us to deal with day to day responsibilities of adulthood and learn about things in a way that helps us address our immediate needs and supports our long term goals. For example, we want any classes like financial literacy, how to get a job classes, and especially driver's ed classes for those students who are going to college and will be soon driving and needing to get a driver's license. As a student athlete, my ultimate goal is to give my siblings a better education as I do have four other siblings also enrolled in the IUSD school district, which I am now thinking of not keeping because of how education, how much education I have got, which was not helpful at all which I will certainly be talking to my father to, you know, consider my sister still going here. Um, as I'm closing, I again urge the school board to make sure that all high schools, elementary schools, and middle schools are offered classes that they need. Thank you for your public comments. Dr. Torres, I can close our public comments for tonight. Thank you so much, Ms. Zambrano. The board members and community, we're gonna transition now to the next item of our board agenda. This is under item uh, number 12. So reporting out of closed session actions. In closed session, the county administrator approved settlement number 06, 2021-2022. We're now moving to item number 13. This is under the consent calendar action items. We're gonna begin with the Division of Human Resources under 13A. Board members, do you have any questions or comments regarding items 13A1 through 13A6? We do not. Thank you. Items 13A1 through 13A6 are each approved. We're now moving to 13B under the Division of Business Services. So um, before we begin with the approval of the items, I'd like to ask Mr. Guzman, our chief business official, if he can please provide us with additional information regarding item 13B13, approval of resolution number 47, 2021, 2022, to adopt fee justification study and increase statutory school fees imposed on residential and commercial industrial developments pursuant to education code 17620. Sure, thank you, Dr. Torres. And we just uh, wanted to clarify, you know, developer fees, they're essentially fees that are paid uh, by property owners and or developers to school districts to mitigate the impact created by new development within the school district's boundaries on school facilities. And so essentially what happened is on February 23rd of this year, February 23rd of this year, uh, the school allocate the uh, state allocation board raised the fees uh, uh, to four dollars and seventy nine cents per square foot. So um, essentially, this study um, would allow us to to levy those uh, fees uh, associated with the increase that the uh, uh, SAB uh, had. So we're just uh, trying to get in compliance with how the state allocation board increased their fees 
Um, and again, it went up to 479 for residential and uh, 78 cents per square foot. Those aren't fees that we made up. Those are fees that came from the state allocation board. They typically will do this every two years. And so it's a, it's, it's highly recommended for school districts to be able to do a uh, increase of those fees, but we can't just unilaterally increase a fee. We have to do what's called a developer fee justification study. And so we actually asked um, uh, a company here, uh, Co-op Strategies to uh, conduct the study for us. And we actually have Mr. Andrew Bishop here, if you could uh, clarify as well on how that process went um, really quickly, uh, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. Uh, board, uh, my name is Andrew Bishop. I'm with Cooperative Strategies and I helped produce the uh, developer fee justification study for Inglewood. As Mr. Guzman said, uh, the SAB every two years will evaluate the statutory residential and commercial industrial rates. Uh, that school districts are eligible to levy against new uh, residential and commercial industrial development. So th these fees are meant as a, a, a form of mitigation for the school district to um, be able to collect money and then ensure that it can provide facilities or amp proper facilities for students that would then be produced either from these homes or from parents whose employment um, is within the district. So new jobs can bring in new students, either you know, by moving to the community or parents who commute in. So when we do this study, this, uh, this really looks at the school district's enrollment today, its availability of capacity today, and the likelihood that any, you know, the district would have to house students in the future. This, um, to, to go back to other comments earlier, this is not an enrollment projection. Enrollment projections are a more, um, a, a more heavy type of report where you, you analyze migration patterns, birth rates, um, housing costs and, and other factors to you know, look at how population moves in and out of the district over time. Whereas this report is really a snapshot of facilities availability today. In doing that, what we've shown is that Inglewood would need to really construct maybe one new classroom at the middle school level, but really the, the impact is coming from new homes producing students and these students would be occupying facilities that would need to be modernized and brought up to a 21st century standard. So this does help mitigate those new homes for students who may be occupying new classrooms that do need to be modernized and will ensure that Inglewood can collect a portion of money from new development, uh, both residential and commercial, to help improve these facilities and supplement any bond money or other monies that is using for those um, needs. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. And, and again, these, uh, these are one-time fees. It's not like an ongoing fee that has to be paid like every you know, every month or anything like that. This is a one-time fee as, as part of the permit for the development of, of whatever it is that's being developed. Um, and uh, they are very restrictive. So these fees are not uh, allowable for just any use. Uh, they have to be for, uh, uh, for new construction or reconstruction. So th there's very specific uses that, that, that are allowed for these fees. So they can't be used towards like, other general things. It's specific for that. And every year we also have a developer fee report um, where we explain, you know, what was collected in developer fees, what was expended in developer fees, and what that was used for. So there is a tracking mechanism that we do uh, on a yearly basis that we have to do uh, to be in compliance. Um, so essentially uh, that is, uh, we just want to clarify that that essentially this fee allows us to be in line with what the state uh, allocation board determined at the higher rates for both residential um, and commercial. And then again, this is not an ongoing, uh, you know, tax or anything like that. This is a, a one-time fee that they uh, are that in, that is incurred as part of a development, and 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 essentially that's because of just the, um, you know, you know, we're increasing to be in line with with uh, the state allocation board. So thank you, Mr. Guzman, and thank you, Mr. Bishop, for joining us this evening as well to provide further clarification regarding this item. Uh, board members, um, do you have any questions or comments regarding items 13B1 through 13B13? This is under the Division of Business Services. No, I do appreciate the clarification, and I think it's important that the community understands exactly what that um, provision is saying. Thank you, we can move. 
Thank you, Dr. McGee. So board members and community items 13B1 through 13B13 are each approved. We're now gonna move to 13C. This is under measure GG and facilities. Board members, do you have any questions or comments regarding items 13E1 through 13, I'm sorry, 13C1 through 13C2? We can move forward. Thank you. Items 13C1 through 13C2 are each approved. We're now moving to item 13D under the Division of Educational Services. Uh, board members, do you have any questions or comments regarding items 13D1 through 13D20? So moved. Thank you. Items 13D1 through 13D20 are each approved. We're now uh, moving to 13E under County Administrator. Board members, do you have any questions or comments regarding items 13E1 through 13E6? So moved. Thank you. Items 13E1 through 13E6 are each approved. Board members and community, we're now moving to item 14 of our board agenda. This is approval of minutes. Uh, board members, do you have any questions or comments regarding the minutes of the regular board meeting held on April 20th, 2022. We do not, Dr. Torres. Thank you so much. Uh, the minutes of the April 20th Board of Education meeting are approved. We're now going to move to item 15 under board member remarks. We're gonna begin with our board vice president, Dr. McGee. I'm gonna open it up to um, our board members. Uh, Ms. Hammond, do you have anything you wanna um, close the meeting out with? Just wanted to say it was a very um, informative meeting to tonight. And um, I hope that what we have achieved so far will um, resonate you know, throughout the uh, district, such as our stellar students and our outstanding teachers and staff and um, all the progress that's happening in the district. It was very informative, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Um, Mr. Castillo. Um, no, no public comments at, at this time, but thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Myers. Thank you, Vice President. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to all the public comments um, that were shared this evening. Um, thank you for the community engagement. Um, also, thank you, Dr. Torres. Thank you to your cabinet, um, the hard work that you all do. Um, also, I'd like to um, say uh, that I did uh, attend the uh, Pacific Islander uh, event. Um, Dr. Goosby, you're amazing. Again, I tell you, amazing, amazing to show that inclusive uh with with our with our Pacific Islander community. So amazing job. And Dr. McGee, amazing job with providing everything that you do. Um, also, I just like to um, finally close with uh, my heart uh, to all of those uh, in Texas. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Um, I, I'd like to close by um, just giving a shout out to Lillian Grant and um, Dr. Goosby. I did have an opportunity to um, stop by. It was absolutely phenomenal. And Dr. Lucas and our director of communications, I was so happy to see someone from the district just to witness it. It was absolutely amazing. And I'd like to close just saying to those families in Buffalo, New York, and in Texas, and here in, in, in um, San Bernardino, um, I have no words when we talk about the safety of our children and being able to send them to school and wanting them to be safe as opposed to knowing that they're safe. It is just something that weighs on my heart. And so I would like to just take a moment of silence just to be 
in support of those families that are grieving, those school districts that are in just mourning. And so if we could take a moment of silence at this particular time to just cover those families and those communities. Thank you. Um, Dr. Torres, we can um, resume our board meeting. Thank you so much. Um, we're gonna move uh, to item 16 under county administrator remarks. Um, so I too want to acknowledge yesterday's uh, shooting in Uvalde, Texas, and want to say that we all know that it was a horrific and tragic act of violence, and it really devastates us as parents, educators, and community members. Our, heart, our hearts are broken uh, for the students, staff, and families whose lives are forever impacted by this tragedy. And this is just uh, another reminder of the importance of our role in ensuring the safety of our students, our staff and our families. Um, as you know, our district sent out a communication yesterday evening to all of our students, our staff, our families, informing them about this recent incident. And as always, we provided resources uh, for our educators and, and our parents to engage children in processing these very difficult events. And so at the Inglewood Unified School District, we really believe that schools must be safe spaces for all of our students and staff and our families. And as we know, safety is always our top priority. And in the aftermath of this traumatic event, um, I want you to know that our district uh, works directly with all of our safety assistants, our administrators, our staff, um, the Inglewood Police Department um, to ensure safety for all. Our, our teams at our school sites review the emergency plans and we work directly with our community stakeholders uh, to ensure safety. And so we encourage our school communities to communicate if they see something, um, they should say something. Um, so please also join me uh, for a moment of silence uh, just to acknowledge all of those um, innocent lives that were lost. Thank you. So we're moving on to item 17. Um, our next board meeting is scheduled for June 22nd, 2022. And I'd like to uh, transition to eight, item 18. I'd like to adjourn our meeting in memory of all of the students, the staff, families, and school communities that have been affected by the recent tragic events and the recent event um, that took place at Robb Elementary School. Our hearts grieve and we extend our deepest condolences on behalf of the Inglewood Unified School District. Our meeting will stand adjourned at 7.31 p.m. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>